from the soil of Goa way back in December 1961 are then political leaders but clearly inclined to play their role in protecting the interests of Goa and Goans. Indeed, they had made many solemn promises from the highest seats of legislative and executive power of our republic, all of which are rightly to be construed as a commitment to grant an appropriate variant of special status for Goa and Goans. But sadly, Speaker Sir, the politically inexperienced and utterly devastated and divided Goans, due to the trauma of the longest and harshest ever colonial subjugation in the annals of history, could neither grasp the situation then, nor foresee the course of events that would overwhelm them. So they did not see the opportunity to press for and obtain a special status for Goa, thereby making themselves vulnerable to the mighty external forces of competitive ingress and socio-economic exploitation. Besides, and very importantly, Speaker Sir, Goa was not a part of the Constituent Assembly when, Indian, when the Indian Constitution was being framed. Goa was still a Portuguese colony then, and it was much later, through the efforts of the freedom fighters and the military intervention in 1961, that Goa was liberated and Indian citizenship was conferred on Goa. a part of the Constituent Assembly and could not avail of the opportunity of placing its requirements of a special status for Goa before the Constituent Assembly as in the case of Himachal Pradesh and other northeastern states of India. Speaker Sir, the cultural identity and integrity of Goans in essence and at its core is very much Indian, as said by the Honorable MLA Vishnu Park, and perfectly harmonious with the broad frame of the national mosaic. However, due to peculiar eco-geographic conditions and historical circumstances, Goans have come to acquire some special and distinctive socio-cultural traits, that is, a unique identity which needs to be protected, preserved and allowed to evolve for the good of Goa and of India. The reality is, however, Speaker Sir, that Goa is on the verge of totally losing this unique identity as its limited land is being sold for the lure of money to the real estate sharks to the builders and to the millionaires from all over the world who come to Goa to exploit this beautiful land and its people. Speaker Sir, Goa is the smallest state in the country. The total area of Goa is 3,702 square kilometers and after deducting its forests, coastal area, agricultural land and hill land and all the used land, only 362 square kilometers of land are left for our future generations. Kumitat land, which belongs to the age-old community institution of Gaunkari, is being acquired and later sold to private interests. Even the land in possession of STs, SCs and overseas is not spared. Speaker Sir, Goa's unique character and its topography, especially in the villages, is being destroyed due to the construction of mega housing complexes to house the rich from the other states by violating all laws of the land purely for profit without 
any consideration to local people's interest and worse still, the local people cannot afford to buy these houses. Speaker Sir, Goa has the highest density of population per square kilometer in the country and the continuous influx of migrants into the state has exceeded its carrying capacity. It is amazing, Speaker Sir, that for 200 years before 1961, the population of Goa was 5 to 6 lakhs, but within 50 years after liberation, the population shot up to 14 lakhs or more, in spite of Goa's birth rate being the lowest. Obviously, insecurity is creeping in and Goans are feeling outnumbered by the migrants. Practically, in the mining sector, if you look around, practically in all the industries, be it mining, fishing, tourism and the manufacturing units, more than 80% of the workforce constitutes the migrants, leaving the locals jobless and unemployed. Speaker Sir, the ever-increasing population of migrants is changing the demography of Goa and also the social, economic, cultural, linguistic and political identity of the Goan society. The pressure on existing infrastructure in the state is suffocating the people. There is shortage of basic amenities like water, electricity, sewage and garbage disposal sites. The existing roads can no longer cope with the ever-increasing traffic and there is no land for expansion. Unless we raise to the ground some of our heritage homes and the houses of the common man along the route. Speaker Sir, the people of Goa are proud citizens of this great country called Bharat. The people of Goa are not against the migrants from any state of the country. However, Goa has reached its saturation point and the time has come to call for a total freeze on the population of Goa to protect its scarce land resources its environment and its unique identity. On behalf of the people of Goa, I strongly urge the Union Government to grant the people of Goa special status under Article 371 of the Constitution as in Himachal Pradesh and Lodhi, Eastern States of India and together as one people of this beautiful, unique state, cutting across political lines, let us put forward our demand. Thank you.